Hello, and welcome to the section of Clinical Evaluation and Treatment Planning, a module of the ACM training that you're completing with this webinar. I'm Felipe Blue, LCAS CSI, and I work for the nonprofit Morton Therapy. Today's speaker, like I said before, I'm Felipe Blue. I'm an enrolled member of the NCSA PPB of North Carolina. I earned a master's in clinical mental health counseling at Webster University. I'm also a clinical supervisor intern and a licensed addictions therapist. For 13 years, I have been a mental health provider in the treatment of youth and families. I'm also an advocate of education in Person County via Roots and Wings of PC, a resource provider for promoting cultural enhancement of evidence-based practices and practice-based evidence of treatment approaches for children and their families exposed to trauma. I have more than 19 years of experience and is knowledgeable about the concerns of implementation and adaptation of evidence-based practices being introduced into practice by Alliance and VIA. I'm currently employed as an executive director of a nonprofit located here in Durham, North Carolina, known as Morton Therapy. The goals and objectives of this particular module is define treatment planning, understanding of correlation between assessment and treatment planning, overview of treatment planning process, treatment plan history, introduction of the treatment planning matters model, and progress notes. What is treatment planning? Ask yourself, what is treatment planning? I'll wait. All right. What is treatment plan? It's a result of collaborative process between the patient and the counselor. Counselor plus patient develop goals and identify strategies or interventions for achieving those goals. Thoughts on treatment planning. The treatment plan is a living document that can change during the course of a patient's treatment involvement. Continuing care planning and discussion should begin with the patient immediately and progress as the treatment process progresses post-admission. A patient's recovery plan truly begins the day they complete their primary treatment stay. The more we involve our patients in the treatment planning process, the more meaning and purpose it will have to them. Treatment plans incorporate information gathered from the assessment, the results of the SI or other instruments, the clinical interview, the collateral information from sources such as family, legal, EAP, physicians, treatment facilities, spiritual advisor and leaders, etc., as well as the presenting problems. Some other instruments, such as examples like the cultural demographic information, the values and belief scale, spiritual advisor and leaders information, and, you know, things like that. Because a person is more than just their history, it's their cultural influences that impact them as well. Bridging assessment with treatment planning. Obtain and interpret all relevant assessment information. An integrated treatment plan addresses substance abuse and mental illness through concurrent treatment. But first address the pressing needs. Let's rewind. Bridge an assessment with treatment planning. Obtain and interpret all relevant assessment information. An integrated treatment plan addresses substance abuse and mental illness through concurrent treatment. First address the pressing needs. Evaluate patient motivation to address substance use. Identify treatment goals and target behaviors. Select interventions for achieving goals and choose measures to monitor outcomes of goal setting. Follow up and modify treatment plans as necessary. 
I want to say that one more again. Follow up and modify treatment plans as necessary. And a tip, something to remember. Withdrawal from alcohol and benzodiazepines can be life-threatening, so medical priorities take precedence. Treatment planning. At a minimum, the treatment plan addresses the identified substance use disorders as well as issues related to treatment progress, including relationships with family and significant others, employment, education, spirituality, health concerns, and legal needs. One, obtain and interpret all relevant assessment information. The stage of change and readiness for treatment, example of Prochaska and Diglimethe, the treatment planning process, the motivation and motivating factors, the role and importance of patient's resources and barriers to treatment, the impact that the patient and family systems have on treatment decisions and outcomes, as well as other sources of assessment information. The stages of change. We start. We start here in the pre-contemplation stage. We then move to the contemplation stage. Then preparation, action, maintenance. But at any given time, boom, we can relapse and we recycle going back a step or two, usually landing, depending on how far we are in the action stage, never going back too far to preparation and contemplation in our pre-contemplation in most cases. It's important to return to patient resources and barriers to treatment when assessing cultural relevant information from the patient. Review and revise. We also must remember the impact that family systems have on treatment decisions and outcomes. We have to be culturally specific and culturally sensitive as the family and community based systems can impact recovery and wellness. Two, explain assessment findings to the patient and significant others involved in potential treatment. But keep in mind confidentiality regulations, effective communication styles, factors affecting the patient's comprehension of assessment findings, and roles and expectations of others potentially involved in treatment. When we say cultural awareness, you know, we have to think about communication styles as of nonverbal. We also must look at customs, eye contact, voice tone, personal contact, etc. Keep all this in mind. Three, provide the patient and significant others with clarification and further information as needed. That means having effective communication styles as well as methods to elicit feedback. It's important to be mindful of cultural ways and customs as well as time being event oriented. Examine treatment implications in collaboration with the patient and significant others. Available treatment modalities, patient placement criteria and cost issues. The effectiveness of the various treatment models based on current research. Implications of various treatment alternatives, including no treatment. Example, one-on-one -on -one counseling, family and group counseling, medical management, the Red Roach approach, community-based programs, etc. Some things that may impact, you know, their ability to go to certain programs might be their lack of childcare or lack of available resources. And remember, any access to resource, any implementation, unless they've had a um, involuntary um, committed, is open to their choice. Five, confirm the readiness of the patient and significant others to participate in treatment. 
motivational processes and the stages of change model. Remember, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance. And, you know, possible at any given stage to fall back into the relapse and recycle, only to go back to one of the other stages. Prioritize patient needs in the order they will be addressed. Treatment sequencing and a continuum of care. The hierarchy of needs. An interrelationship among patients' needs and problems. Seven, formulate mutually agreed upon and measurable treatment outcome statements for each need. Access the levels of the patient motivation, the treatment needs of a diverse populations and how to write measurable outcome statements. Eight, identify appropriate strategies for each outcome. That's the intervention strategies and the level of patient's interest in making specific changes, as well as treatment issues with diverse populations. An example would be, the clinician will evaluate Jan's need for medical monitoring or medication. Treatment issues might be holistic view, spiritual community, extended families, as well as communication styles. Nine. Coordinate treatment activities and community resources. Coordinate treatment activities and community resources will prioritize patient needs in a manner consistent with the patient's diagnosis and existing placement criteria. Treatment modalities and community resources. Contributions of other professions and mutual help or self-help support groups. Current placement criteria and the importance of patient's racial or ethnic culture, age, developmental level, gender and life circumstances and coordinating resources to the patient's needs. 10. Develop with the patient a mutually acceptable plan of action and method for monitoring and evaluating process. Progress. The relationship among problem statements, desired outcomes and treatment strategies. Short and long-term treatment planning. Evaluation methodology. Short term is considered one year or less. Long term, one year or more. Eleven, inform patient of confidentiality rights, program procedures that safeguard them and the exceptions imposed by regulations. That's federal, state and agency confidentiality regulations, requirements and policies. Provide resources for legal consultation and keep in mind effective communication styles. The treatment plan is considered a legal document. 12. Reassess the treatment plan at regular intervals and or when indicated by changing circumstances. Evaluate treatment and stages of recovery. Review and revise the treatment plan. 13. The more we involve our patients in developing their healing plan, the greater meaning and purpose it would hold for them moving forward. Treatment plans are meaningless and time consuming. Ignored. Same plan, different names. Treatment plan goals may look very different for a patient in an entry level outpatient service compared to a patient in a 30 day, 60 day residential program. A patient's age, gender, drug of choice, cultural background will influence the goals and action steps that a patient brings to the session. What other factors might influence treatment planning goals? An outpatient patient 
might review their goals one to two times during their entire treatment involvement, whereas a continuing care patient may review and edit their goals dozens of times over the course of a year or two. Other organizational considerations. Information requirements of funding entities and managed care. Is there a duplication of information collected? Is technology used effectively? Is paperwork useful in treatment planning process? The field of substance abuse treatment early work was program driven plans, one size fits all, cookie cutter goals, agency knows what the patient needs. In many circles, we see a lot of this still going on, specifically cookie cutter goals, one size fits all, and agency knows what the patient needs. But no more. Program-driven plans. Patient needs are not important as the patient is fit into the standard treatment program regimen. Plan often includes only standard program components like group or individual sessions. And there's little difference among the patient's treatment plans. Program-driven plans, the patient will remain abstinent from all substances, including alcohol, attend three AA meetings a week, read pages one through 164 in the AA Big Book, complete steps one, two, and three, attend group session three times a week, meet with the counselor one time a week, complete 28-day program. Boom, boom, boom. From patient to patient, you see a similarity in plans, a similarity in outcomes expected, but no more. Treatment plans should be addressed to the individual. Program-driven plans, some more, often include only those services immediately available in agency. I say that again, often include only those services immediately available in agency, and often do not include referrals to community services like parenting classes. Treatment planning, it's a paradigm shift. Individualized treatment plans, many options are available a custom style and fit. It's a living document and it's based on the patient and his or her own words. Her own words. Individualized plan. Developed to match patients' problems and needs, their problems, their needs, their specific problems, their specific needs. To individualize a plan, what information is needed? What does a counselor need to discuss before developing a treatment plan? Where do you get the information? guidelines, tools used, etc. There are some good templates and treatment plan guides available. Oftentimes, an experienced therapist will have developed a menu or an adjustable list of goals and action steps based on previous patients with similar issues. Many EHR systems with the treatment center will have built-in treatment plan programs that offer suggestions and basic outlines from which a clinician and patient can derive very personalized and specific goals. To individualize a plan, what information is needed? Possible sources of information might include probation reports, screening results, assessment scales, collateral interviews, examples of individualized treatment plans from previous patients, feedback and discussion with supervisor or mentor about treatment plans.
the biopsychosocial model, biological, psychological, and sociological. This is key. It is a holistic and responsible way to view a patient's needs, strengths, and goals. A biopsychosocial model example. Does the patient have a car? Can they access public transportation? How close do they live to the treatment center? How available are drugs or alcohol in the home? Problem domains in the psychosocial model, medical status, psychiatric status, family and social status. Why make the effort? Plans should be individual, individualized treatment plans. It leads to increased retention rates, which are shown to lead to improved outcomes. It empowers the counselor and the patient and focuses counseling sessions. It provides the patient with an attainable framework from which to build measurable recovery objectives. Why make the effort? In individualized treatment plans, it fits the patient well. Like measurements, the ASI items are used to fit the patient's services to her or his needs. What is included in any treatment plan? We'll pause a second while we marinate on that. What is included in any treatment plan? Components of the treatment plan. One, problem statements, information from the assessment. Two, goal statements based on the problem statement. Three, objectives, what the patient will do. Four, interventions, what the staff will do. Treatment plan components. One, problem statements are based on information gathered during the assessment. Two, Goal statements are based on the problem statements and reasonably achievement in the active treatment phase. Three, objectives are what the patient would do to meet those goals. Interventions are what the staff would do to assist the patient. Other common terms, action steps, measurable activities, treatment strategies, benchmarks, tasks. Although there are some exceptions, most treatment programs are abstinence-based. Therefore, remaining alcohol and drug-free are often default goals or objectives for patients in early recovery treatment services. That being said, risk reduction and or cutting back on substance use may be possible for a patient who are self-referred and do not express an interest in remaining completely abstinent from all substances. These risk reduction plans can be effective but are also wrought with potential risks for the client. Review, components in a treatment plan, problem statements, information from the assessment, goal statements based on the problem statement, objectives, what the patient will do, the interventions, what the staff will do. So what are some problem statements that you've seen or gathered from an assessment.
What are some goal statements based on the problem statement? What are some objectives what the patient will do? What are some interventions what the staff will do? Discharge plan components. Patient strengths are reflected. Participants in planning are documented. Considerations in writing. All problems identified are included regardless of available agency services. Inclu include all problems whether deferred or addressed immediately. Each domain should be reviewed. A referral to outside resources is a valid approach to addressing a problem. Tips on writing problem statements. Be non-judgmental. No jargon statements. Patient is in denial or patient is codependent. Use complete sentence structure. How we write an objective intervention strategies. Well, it matters. <laughs> Treatment matters. Measurable, attainable time limited, realistic, and specific. I say it again, though I do see a spelling error in this slide. Treatment matters. Measurable, attainable, time limited, realistic, specific. We typically call this a SMART goal. Specific, measurable, attainable, time limited, realistic, time limited. Okay but I like to call it a matters because treatment matters. Those treatment goals should be smart. Ultimately, to the client, to the patient, it matters. Objectives and interventions, measurable. Objectives and interventions are measurable. Achievement is observable. Measurable indicators of patient's progress, you can use assessment scales and scores, patient's report, or report from friends and family, co-workers, etc., and behavioral and mental status changes. Remember, these are also called SMART goals, which you likely know them as more specifically, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-sensitive but I like to use the word matters. Objective and interventions matters. Attainable. Objectives and interventions are attainable during active treatment phase. Focus on improved functioning rather than cure. Identify goals attainable and level of care provided. And revise goals when patient moves from one level to care to another. Objectives and interventions, they should be time limited. Focus on time limited or short-term goals and objectives. Objectives and interventions can be reviewed within a specific time period. Time limited, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days measurable, time limited. They should also be realistic. The patient can realistically complete objectives within a specific time period. Goals and objectives are achievable given patient environment, supports, diagnosis, and level of functioning. And progress requires patient effort. Realistic. And it should be specific. Objectives and interventions are specific and goal focused. Addressing specific behavioral terms, how level of functioning or functional impairments will improve.
the matters test. Is it measurable? Can change be documented? Is it attainable? Is it achievable within an active treatment phase? Is it time limited? Is time frame specified? Will staff be able to review within a specific period of time? Is it realistic? Is it reasonable to expect the patient will be able to take steps on his or her behalf? Is it agreeable to patient and staff? Will patient understand? Is it specific? Will patient understand what is expected and how program staff will assist in reaching goals? Is it measurable? Is it attainable? Is it time limited? Is it realistic? Is it specific? Treatment planning process review. You conduct the assessment. You collect patient data and information. You identify problems. You develop goals to address problems. You remember what matters or you remember SMART. Objectives to meet goals and interventions to assist patient in meeting those identified goals. The five components of an effective treatment plan. One, the goals are objectives. Every good treatment plan starts with a clear goal or a set of goals. Identify what your patient would like to work on and write it down. Don't be scared of limiting your work. You can always adjust these as time goes on. However, it's helpful to write down and discuss what your patient's purpose is for starting therapy. How would they know they are on the right path? What will you both use to determine when the patient is ready to terminate? Having a clear goal makes sure everyone is on the same page and keeps you both accountable to focusing on what is necessary. It also helps your client to feel like therapy is something that is more than esoteric, something they could describe to a spouse or family member if desired. Treatment plan continued. Two, active participation. A treatment plan then follows up with how each party will work to achieve the goals. This is really important and often missed. Talk with your patient about your role as a therapist and how you plan to help them achieve their desired outcome. This opens up a great discussion about the role of a therapist and how therapy looks with you, specifically as compared with others. The other key piece here is how the patient will participate. This is where you have the opportunity to explain what is expected of them and that you are not there to simply fix anyone. Therapy is often hard work, but can have amazing results. However, success is 100% dependent on the client's motivation and willingness to engage in the process. Treatment planning continued. Support. Another aspect of treatment planning that is so often forgotten in private practice settings is the client support system. It's not just you and the client against the world. They'll need other supports in place to be successful throughout life. Identify any support as part of your treatment plan and you have already shown your client some of the tools in their toolbox. Get creative here. Perhaps the client's support is a family member or friend, but could also be a pet or a support group. Maybe it's a hobby or spiritual practice that helps them keep grounded. Perhaps some character traits like being fiscally responsible, planning ahead, or being very outgoing or creative. These are all supportive things that help the client reach their goals. Treatment planning continued. Four, outcomes. The last important aspect of the written plan is these outcomes or successes. Make sure to write these down at various interviews. Maybe you visit the outcomes so far once a month, maybe every three months, etc. Choose what interval works best for your patient and your style and make sure to plan to talk with them about it. Is this still the primary goal or do we need to adjust something? Are we staying on track with these? If not, it is time to redirect or do we need to revisit some things? What success have we made and what contributed to that? What will we continue to do in order to reach that goal? 
And once you clearly reach that goal, have we discovered other things through the process that we need to prioritize? Is it time to talk about termination? And what would that look like? Treatment planning continued. Five, client involvement. I've saved the most important step to effective treatment planning for last. Involving your patients is crucial. Without their feedback, your treatment plan is no more meaningful than a term paper with a bunch of words on it. This is an ongoing conversation to have throughout treatment. Treatment planning isn't something you do at the first or second session and then forget about it. It's an integral part of the counseling process. It's a clinical discussion that's simply put on paper to provide a clear outline and clearer understanding of the direction in which you plan to go. Remember, your documentation serves you and the patient, not the other way around. Documentation. The progress note. Documentation, documentation types. The type of session. The level of care. The date. The patient name. The counselor name. The counselor signature and credentials. Progress note formats, PI, SOAP, BERG, DAP. Um, PI is um, Progress Intervention Effectiveness. SOAP is Subjective Objective Assessment Plan. BERP is Behavior Intervention Response Plan. DAP is Data Assessment Plan. Collaborative documentation. Collaborative documentation, sometimes referred to as concurrent documentation, is a process in which clinicians and patients collaborate in the documentation of the assessment, service planning, and ongoing client practitioner interactions, better known as progress notes. Collaborative documentation. Do you know of anybody using this at your agency or your practice? It's given the industry's transition to electronic health records, there really is no better time to consider adding collaborative documentation to your clinical toolbox. Flipping through paper charts is a cumbersome experience and opening up multiple documents on a workstation is a fragmented process. The ease of being in an electronic record lends to easy access for viewing progress over time with clients, collaborating on recording each session and capturing your client's signature. From this place, you may open doors you had unknowingly walked past before. Documentation basic guidelines. Measurable, dated, signed, and legible. Patient name, unique identifier, start, stop time, and credentials. I want to stress, start, stop times. Attainable, interventions used to address problems, goals, and objectives. Time limited. Add new problems, goals, and objectives. Realistic. The content of session and patient response. Progress towards goals and objectives. And specific. Specific problems, goals, and objectives address. See, it matters. Measurable. Attainable. Time limited. Realistic. Specific. Documentation basic guidelines. Entries should include your professional assessment and a continued plan of action. Progress notes may be documented collaboratively with the patient's direct feedback and completed at the end of the session rather than post-service. Documentation basic guidelines describes changes in patient status, response to outcome of intervention, Observed behavior, progress towards goals and completion of objectives. Summary. Presentation summary, treatment planning. Obtain and interpret all relevant assessment information. 
Two, explain assessment of findings to the patient and significant others involved in potential treatment. Provide the patient and significant others with clarification and further information as needed. Examine treatment implications in collaboration with the patient and significant others. Confirm the readiness of the patient and significant others to participate in treatment, you know, the motivational level, and prioritize patient needs in the order they will be addressed. Seven, formulate mutually agreed upon and measurable treatment outcome statements for each need. Eight, identify appropriate strategies for each outcome. Nine, Coordinate treatment activities and community resources will prioritize patient needs in a manner consistent with the patient's diagnosis and existing placement criteria. 10. Develop with the patient a mutually acceptable plan of action and method for monitoring progress. 11. Inform patient of confidentiality rights, program procedures that safeguard them, and the exceptions imposed by regulations. 12. Reassess the treatment plan at regular intervals and or when indicated by changing circumstances. ASAN criteria and level of care. Assessment ASAM 3rd edition. American Society of Addictions Medicine, that's ASAM criteria. It's clinically, it's clinically driven, not program driven. Criteria do not involve a prescribed length of stay, but promote a flexible continuum of care. It involves an interdisciplinary approach to care. It includes informed consent. It's outcomes driven and it clarifies medical necessity. The levels of care are early intervention, outpatient treatment, intensive outpatient treatment, partial hospitalization, low intensity residential treatment, medium intensity residential treatment, high intensity residential treatment, medically monitored intensive inpatient treatment. Dimensions of ASAM. One, acute intoxication and withdrawal potential. Two, biomedical conditions and complications. Three, emotional, behavior, or cognitive conditions and complications. Four, readiness to change. Five, relapse, continued use or continued problem potential. Six, recovery or living environment. And seven, severity in each dimension can be rated as mild, moderate, or severe. Levels of care. Level 0 0.5 is considered early intervention. That's like one-on-one -on -one counseling and educational problems. Patients do not meet criteria for substance-related disorder. Problems in dimensions one, two, or three are stable or being addressed. Levels of care, level one, outpatient treatment. Therapies include individual and group counseling, motivational enhancement, opioid substitution therapy, family therapy, educational groups, occupational and recreational therapy, psychotherapy, other therapies, and continuing care post-primary treatment. Level one, outpatient treatment dimensional admission criteria. Dimension one, no withdrawal signs or symptoms. Dimension two, biomedical concerns are stable. Dimension three, A or B and C and D. A, no occurring mental disorder symptoms or symptoms are mild and stable. B, psychiatric symptoms are mild, but mental health monitoring is needed. C, mental status doesn't interfere with understanding and participation. D, no risk of harm to self or others. Level one, outpatient treatment dimensional admission criteria. Dimension four, A and B or C or D. A willingness to comply with treatment plan. Acknowledges substance use and wants help. 
ambivalent about substance use, doesn't recognize substance use. Dimension five, able to achieve or maintain abstinence only with support. Level one, outpatient treatment, dimensional admissions criteria, dimension six, A or B or C. Supportive environment for treatment or inadequate support system but willing to obtain a support system or family is supported but needs intervention to improve chances of success. Level 2.1. Intensive Outpatient Dimensional Admission Criteria. Dimension 1. No Withdrawal Signs or Symptoms. Dimension 2. Biomedical Stable or Monitor Concurrently with No Interference. Level 2.1 Intensive Outpatient Dimensional Admission Criteria. Dimension 3. A or B abuse of family or diagnosed emotional, behavioral, or cognitive disorder that requires monitoring. Dimension four, A or B, need for structure or a need for repeated structured interventions. Level 2.1 intensive outpatient dimensional admissions criteria, dimension five, Symptoms intensifying and functioning deteriorating at lower level of care. Dimension six, A or B. Current environment makes recovery unlikely or current social situation not helping recovery. Level 3.5, residential dimensional admission criteria. Dimension one, minimal risk of severe withdrawal or severe but manageable in 3.7, which is detox. Dimension two, none or stable or receiving concurrent medical monitoring or requires medical monitoring but manageable in 3.7, known as detox. Level 3.5, residential dimensional admission criteria. Dimension three, A, or B, repeated inability to control impulses or personality disorder requires high structure to shape behavior. Dimension four, A or B, mark difficulty with or opposition to treatment or dangerous consequences if not engaged in treatment. Level 3.5 residential dimensional admission criteria, dimension five, no recognition of skills needed to prevent the continued use with dangerous consequences. Dimension six, A or B, environment is dangerous or patient lacks skills to cope outside of highly structured 24 hour setting. Withdrawal management overview, components of withdrawal management services, withdrawal management service levels one, 2, 3.2, 3.7, and 4 in ASAM are provided as part of a continuum of five withdrawal management levels in the American Society of Addiction Medicine, known as ASAM. Withdrawal management criteria include a continuum of care that ensures that patients can enter substance use disorder treatment at a level appropriate to their needs and step up or down to a different intensity of treatment levels. Withdrawal management continue. Intake. The process of admitting a patient into a substance use disorder treatment program. This includes the substance abuse evaluation, the diagnosis of the substance use disorder, the assessment of treatment needs, and may include a physical examination and or laboratory testing. Observation. The process of monitoring the patient's course of withdrawal as frequently as deemed medically appropriate this may include, but is not limited to, observation of the patient's health status. Medication services. 
the prescription or administration related to the substance use disorder treatment services and or the assessment of the side effects and results of that medication. Discharge services. Preparing the patient for referral into another level of care. Post-treatment return or re-entry into the community and are the linkage of the individual to community treatment, housing, and human services. Withdrawal management continue, licensing and certification requirements. In order to provide withdrawal management detoxification services, providers must obtain specific licensing and certification requirements according to the level of service required. Summary, ASAM risk ratings and levels of care. General ASAM risk rating guidelines are as follows. RR0-1 or equals 0 0.05. EIS or level one continuing care. RR1-2, which equals level one EOP. RR2-3, which equals level 2.1 IOP. RR3-4A backslash 4B equals 3.5 residential. ACM risk ratings can assist the evaluator in making consistent, accurate, and objective decisions about patient's level of care and related treatment decisions. Services. There are always exceptions to any guidelines. Thoughts, questions, feedback.